Holly here. Welcome to the Holly Jolly Craft Miss. This is the debut video. I am so happy that you're here to join me. Today I'm going to be working on some memory decks cards. So I have in front of me here my memory decks template that I've created, a hole punch, some digital papers. I'm using the Crate Paper, Crate Paper Merry Days collection, and then um, some die cuts I've done on my silhouette and some heavy duty cardstock, um, just plain old white cardstock. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my bases. Um, like I said, this is my own template that I use and I will be releasing a video soon that talks a little bit about more about the template and also a really cool little box that you can make just using some lightweight chipboard and some pattern paper. So I have all of these digital papers that I've uh, printed out. I used a full digital collection here. This was all pretty much print and cut. Um, first, I am going to get these bases set up and I am going to take care of my corners. I don't always do these first, but today I decided that that's the route I wanted to go. So I have a corner rounder, I have this little corner chomper, um, and then I have this other little punch that I don't know the name of, but it's kind of like um, a ticket corner. Yeah, we'll call it that. Uh, so I've just gone ahead and gotten the edges uh, all taken care of. And now I'm going to go through and sort out the numerous die cuts. I pretty much did um, two of everything in the collection. So I've pulled a few memory decks cards that I had created before out and I'm going to scrap lift myself. Um, there's no need for me to reinvent the wheel here. I already have some designs that I was really happy with so I'm going to go ahead and at least scrap lift two of my cards. So that is a great little trick that will definitely help you so that you're not um, kind of staring at a blank slate with uh, no idea what to do. So I'm creating two different sets here. I'm going to use all of the Merry Days collection, but I'm going to go with kind of like a fun, whimsical set and then a little bit more of a traditional look. So um, and in the way I'm going to do that is kind of like the darker, richer colors for like my quote unquote traditional set and then more of the pinks and the brighter uh, colors for the quote unquote uh, whimsy set or fun set. These cards are going, or I should say they've already gone, um, to some friends in a memory decks card swap that was organized by Dearly D. She put that together for her Patreons, and so it was really fun to create these cards for um, two new little crafty friends, and I have sent them off, and I'm sure they've gotten them by now, and I hope they really like them. So, like I said, I'm kind of creating two different sets as I go, and I thought that I might do them alternately. So I would come up with a design and create one, and then I would translate that design into the other set. Um, but in the end, it was much easier for my brain to kind of stick in one lane. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just create the three cards that I'm kind of calling a set, and then the other three. So you guys will get to see the process on the kind of more whimsy fun set. And then you'll see the finished photos at the end of the kind of more traditional set. So like I said, I'm scrap lifting myself. Now the card that I'm starting with was built with washi tape. And I don't have the washi tape for this collection. Although you can simply print it. They provide it in the digital collection and you can print it on clear sticker paper. I've done that. It works out like a treat. So there is an option to do that. But translates just as well to strips of paper. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just cutting up strips of paper. I'm cutting them a little more than an inch just so that I can layer them on top of each other. So here's where I still was kind of thinking I was going to build each card um, simultaneously or back to back. And then uh, I kind of got overwhelmed here with all of the colors and um, trying to kind of work two at the same time and my brain just doesn't work that way. So this is where I hit the decision to just do one set at a time. So like I said, I cut the papers just a tiny bit larger than one inches so that I could layer them on top of each other and have this kind of even look. So this first set, I just am going to create kind of like this little vignette. And, and really, honestly, that's what I usually do. Um, I'm very literal. I have a real hard time getting outside of that box. So for me, I'm always creating like scenes or things that go together because to just throw on a bunch of random stuff just to layer it, I love that look, but my brain does not compute. So every time I try to do that, it just 
to me, it comes off as like lame. It doesn't work. So, um, like I said, I kind of keep to my style. I know my lane. I know what works for me. I'm going to stick with that. So never be afraid to try something new, but never be afraid of your comfort zone either. I kind of say, find a good happy medium. So my comfort zone is um, kind of sticking to what I know here, and that is creating this uh, little scene. So I kind of wavered back and forth on my paper choices, but as you can see, I'm committing. I'm putting some stuff down. So uh, my adhesive of choice, uh, I've had a few people ask me this, is the Tombow Mono Adhesive. I have been religious to it for years. I've, I've tried to stray away and I come back over and over. It always just works so well for me. I like it. I know it. I'm sticking with it. So the other thing that I'm doing here is creating layers. Now, I don't go too crazy with the layering because it just doesn't feel natural to me. But what I do use are extra bits of cardstock, just plain cardstock, and I just kind of cut them up into teeny tiny bits till I get what I want. I'm basically just trying to create a little bit of lift so that it's not a completely flat card. And then craft foam. Craft foam is my friend. Um, when you're creating something with dimension, craft foam is awesome. It's cheap. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at your craft store, um, anywhere they sell little kids crafts you can get it adhesive backed or not I never find the adhesive backed so me and the Tombow we work just fine I just have to angle it a little to get the get the adhesive to stick but it's never steered me wrong so for this particular card I've got this little picture frame this cute little scene and then to go with it this little cup of hot cocoa and I've actually lifted that cocoa up with two layers of the craft foam so that's giving it an extra little bit of dimension that's probably as much dimension as I usually go with. Anything more than that seems, um, it doesn't work for me. It's crazy. It doesn't fit for me. I, I love it. I think it's awesome. I love when there's so much dimension that it's like big and chunky and thick, but I don't really know how to pull that off. So this is, this is kind of where I land. Now I really wanted to include like a little tab at the top, but I just couldn't figure out how to get it to work. I didn't like the look. And I think the problem is that there was too many curves there, the rounded corners and then the roundedness of the tab. So I ditched that idea and I just stick with putting this cute little um, December 20, 25th uh, little, um, kind of looks like a stamp almost. I just pop that back there. And again, I just lifted it off the card with just a tiny bit of cardstock. I kind of looked at maybe embellishing it with maybe some enamel dots. I also pull out this red thread. Um, there's like a little red thread you can see with the um, the, the sled being pulled, but eh, it just didn't work. So I ditched it and moved on. Now for this next card, I am creating, again, another little scene because that's how my brain works. And I just loved these little houses. I thought they were so cute and I thought it'd be just adorable to have like these, these little houses, like they're this little neighborhood and this little car driving past with its Christmas tree. Um, I don't know if this is how you operate, but as I'm making these, I'm often kind of telling a little story to myself or to anybody that might see it. So for this card, I'm creating a pocket. So this little scene is going to be this cute little neighborhood, and then it's going to have a transparent pocket. I'm going to accomplish this by sewing it onto the card. Um, this is not my normal thing, but I am getting more comfortable with my sewing machine. I am starting to embrace it. It's my tiny little hefty machine, and uh, if it breaks down, I'm going to cry because you can't get it anymore. <laughs> so... Here is another little quirk of mine. I do things upside down sometimes, so I have to kind of stave that off by creating little um, marks for myself. So you saw I put a little arrow on the back of that card because I want to make sure I have the pattern the way that I want it facing. Because if you can look at it, you'll see there's like a smidge of the plaid at the bottom, and I want to make sure that stays on the bottom. So I am playing around now with the height of my little transparency pocket and I finally settled on two and a half inches high. So two and a half inches will give me plenty of room to stick little tags and things in there but not be uh, too much. So 
I'm, I'm getting closer to getting to the point of sewing. I was a little nervous. I was really hoping this would work. So I was smart enough to remember not to adhere down these little houses where the stitches are going to go because my sewing machine does not like stitching through adhesive. So I've just applied a little bit to the inside of those houses where it's going to rest inside the card. And then you can see I've just sewn around the sides and the bottom. I used a little washi tape to keep the transparency in place while I ran it through my sewing machine. And now I can go ahead and finish decorating this card. I left the little houses peeking out on the side because I think that's really fun to have a little extra um, dimension, both height wise and also kind of spread out. So I'm going to now attempt to use that little, what did we say we're calling it? A ticket punch? Sure. Um, the little ticket corner thing, but nope. Uh, that didn't work, so I just used my scissors, no problem. Again, I'm going to use some craft foam for this little car to just give it a little um, dimension. And I'm trusting the Tombow. I'm trusting that it's going to stick to that transparency. And then I just tucked this little house in, in the between, and I just, I just love that. I just think it's so cute on its own. But now, when you take all of the little tags that I'm going to stick in there out, you still have this decorated card. You don't, you don't take away the design or um, the decor of the card when you take out the little extra pieces. You probably saw in the bottom left corner there, these um, epoxy dots and things are magically moving in and out of the screen. That's because my two and a half year old toddler came into the room and wanted to play. And so I kind of shoved um, some extra pieces of paper at her and said, go play. <laughs> she did, thankfully. Here I'm going to use some red line tape because this um, this tiny little strip of word, I, I don't want to gum it all up with the adhesive. So I'll just use a little red line tape to make sure that that stays on there. And then I'm just tucking in these extra little tags. I have this little sticker sheet that I had cut out on my silhouette, but it was just a little too big. So that just ended up getting tucked in the package. So I just filled up the pocket with uh, extra little tags and ephemera. And I thought again, should I add an extra thing? Should I put a few enamel dots on it? In the end, I decided no, let's just leave it be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and notch out the bottom and punch the little holes and that card is now done. So let me take a quick break here to talk a little bit about my gift away. I am going to be giving away a new set of memory decks cards and I haven't created them yet. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to making these for one of the winners. Here's how you win. Go ahead and drop a comment below and tell me what's your favorite must watch Christmas movie. I am going to draw a winner from all of the people that comment and this giveaway will be open through December 5th. At that time I'll close it, but don't worry, there's going to be plenty more giveaways as the Holly Jolly Craftmas series continues on. So don't forget to drop a comment below, tell me what your favorite must watch Christmas movie is and hopefully you get to win a cool memory deck set from me. And by the way, this is completely open worldwide. So drop that comment. Okay, back to the process. So we're on to the last card here. And I wanted to make sure to include some sequins. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to create a shaker pocket. I was going through all of the um, die cuts and I just really loved this little snow globe. It looked like a charm. And I thought it would be really fun to create a little tag cluster to kind of look like charms. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these together and I'm going to attach them to the card with a little jump ring and a little eyelet. And I'm gonna be doing that again for probably my December daily album because I really loved how it turned out. On to the sequins, time to make a mix. I can't believe I didn't spill these all over my desk. Well, let's be fair and honest, I, I kind of did, but I edit that out. <laughs> So these are my numerous sequins. Um, again, the winner of the memory decks cards that I'll be making is going to be getting a wonderful little sequin mix. I have some special um, little tricks up my sleeve for creating some cool sequin mixes, uh, some of which you'll get to see in some upcoming videos. But for this card, I am just creating this little sequin mix that's going to sit inside of a shaker pocket, and I'm going to use tool to enclose this all. So. I wanted to make sure that the tiny little pink sequins that I used weren't going to fall out of the pouch um, or the tool, like they wouldn't go through the mesh and they seemed fine. 
So I've got this little bit of white tool. I'm going to use my sewing machine. <laughs> I'm going to use my sewing machine again. I'm just going to go ahead and sew around the edges. I will leave part of it open on one end, tuck the sequins in, and then close it up. I'm not going to make you watch me sew. So here we go. Voila, all done. So I'm just trimming this up. I really don't know why I grabbed these big bulky scissors, um, probably because at any given time, I have about five pairs of scissors on my desk. You might have noticed in other videos that I'm always reaching for a different pair of scissors. I don't know what it is about me and scissors, but <laughs> um, I probably should use a sharper little scissors, but I, I will eventually. I do, I do get smart and figure it out, as you can see here. So I'm just trimming up the tool. I didn't trim it um, any further than just the edges of the card because it looked fine. I just got to clean up the little threads. And then I'm going to take this strip of paper and I'm going to adhere it to the bottom. Again, this time I am going to use some red line tape because I have learned my lesson that the Tombow and tool and paper don't mix well. It will fall off. So red line has never steered me wrong when it comes to adhering onto tool. So that's what I'm going to use here. I'm just going to tuck a little bit on the bottom here. I will run a little bit of the Tombow adhesive um, just to give it a little extra oomph and make sure everything sticks down just fine. I also was very pleased that none of the sequins came out. The stitching worked just fine. That is a great way to enclose sequins on a shaker pocket. If you don't have a fuse, but you're comfortable with your sewing machine, I highly recommend giving it a try. Sequins had kind of intimidated me for quite a while and I finally have embraced it and I've just decided to play with them. So I have some other really fun sequin things that I'll be sharing with you guys in the upcoming videos and I really hope that you will bust out your sequin mixes and give them some more love. So now I'm going to pull out the crocodile and go ahead and pop in an eyelet. Eyelets are hard to find right now, or at least they are for me. So uh, I was really pleased to find this little box that had multiple colors. They are kind of tiny, which has been a little bit of an issue here and there, but um, for the most part, they work just fine. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with the lighting here. I live in Minnesota and after four o'clock, the sun is gone, so I have to go to artificial light and I have no idea what's going on here, but um, it's not a disco in my office, honestly. Trust me, it's not. <laughs> So again, I'm creating this little cluster of tags to kind of look like a bundle of charms, sort of, um, if that makes sense. It does in my brain, at least. Uh, so I'm using a jump ring to just go ahead and attach those to the eyelet at the top of this card. And I really, like I said, I love how this turned out. I'm going to create more of those and put them into my December Daily album. Um, I think it'd be really cute to have those just kind of loose on one of the rings. I've gone in and I've pulled out some of this red and white baker's twine and I'm just going to add a little accent by creating a little bow at the top of this card. Um, there goes my disco lights. I really don't know what was going on there. It's so bizarre. Um, but as I said, I created these three cards and then I created three more. So you're going to be able to see the finished cards here in just a moment and you'll get to see the other set that I did. So Honestly, memory decks cards are so much fun to make. It's so much fun to have this freedom just to play with paper and to not worry about journaling or memory keeping. Um, although they do make kind of fun little memory keeping too. You could easily pop a little Insta, uh, what's it called? Insta, sta Instax, whatever those little Polaroid type pictures are. Um, that would be really cute on a memory decks card as well. So. Like I said, memory decks cards are super fun. I really hope you'll give this a try and you don't need the fancy expensive dies or punches. I mean, they're fun. I kind of want them, but you really can make these with just a simple template to um, make sure that the bottom has the holes punched and that's it. That's really all you need to do. So um, as you can see, these are the other ones that I made. Again, I kind of went more with the darker, more traditional colors. I used vellum for the pocket and uh, you can even see a little bit of that faux washi that I printed on clear sticker paper. 
So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, this is just the start of the Holly Jolly Craftmas and I hope you'll stick around and come back and watch more of the videos and participate in the giveaways. If you like this video, I would love for you to give a thumbs up. That really does help me and I would greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And then finally, don't forget to hit that little bell so you're getting notifications when new videos are posted. There's gonna be new videos posted almost daily for the next couple weeks. So um, I hope that you will come back and hang out with me. That's all for now, friends. So I will see you all in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.